Welcome back everyone, Mike here. It is another hot and humid one here in PA today. Although it's not quite as bad as it was yesterday and the sun is behind the clouds for the time being. But today is Wednesday, but I'm gonna call it wood day because we're down here at the sawmill. We've got a beautiful cherry log on the mill right now. And before I got started on that, I wanted to kind of clean up this area here and split a little bit of firewood. If you've been following our channel, you know the story on this splitter. This is a Wolf Ridge Pro 28C. Works like a dream. Now this wood here, I'm splitting it kind of small. Uh, this is destined to be bundle firewood. That's what this is for. This is a mix of uh, cherry and some oak and uh, should be pretty nice stuff. This will end up getting stacked up by the new building. On this side of the building, I'm going to make a nice wide spot there off the driveway and uh, we'll set up a little bundling operation up there. But yeah, pretty nice stuff. So last night I meant to go fill up all my gas cans and I didn't get around to it. So this morning I came down here and I was splitting wood for maybe five or ten minutes and I ran out of gas in the splitter and I thought I had a can up the house with a little bit in it and I said, you know what, I'm just going to grab all my cans, I'll grab Hunter and we'll go over to Speedway. It's a little convenience store a couple miles from here. So we ran over there and I was glad I did because when I pulled in, I parked and there was a guy across the parking lot getting out of his truck and I hear him yelling, hey Mike, you know, he's like, I watch your channel or he just found our channel and he's yelling outdoors with the Morgans and I didn't catch his name, but uh, that was pretty cool. But anyway, I need to figure out a good uh, gasoline storage uh, system for around here. I have a tank for diesel. It's only 50 gallons. Actually, I need a bigger one for that as well. Uh, but as far as gasoline goes, I don't seem to use as much in the winter. But in the summer, between the mowing, the side-by-side, -side, the sawmill, the splitter, I go through probably, I don't know, 20 gallons every two weeks or something like that. So it'd be good to get some type of nice uh, tank to store gasoline as well, both diesel and gas. If uh, you guys have a good setup at your place or something, shoot me an email or let me know in the comments if you would. So this log here is a 10-footer. Here at the small end, it's about 19 inches in diameter. At the big end, probably about 22, 23. Yeah, 23 at the big end. This is straight as an arrow. This is a beautiful cherry log. Looks really clear. Uh, we'll get a good look at the color here in just a little bit. But I think, I'm actually sure, I'm sure this is the nicest cherry log that I've sawed. Now, I've only been running this mill about two years, but I'm really looking forward to getting into this one. I think this is going to be the best one that I've sawed so far. Now, as far as where you can find really good quality cherry trees, I share the same opinion as many others. And that is that I believe Pennsylvania has the best cherry in the world, hands down. Now, in other areas, other states, you can get into pockets of it that are pretty nice. And like around here, our cherry's pretty good. But the best in the world and just thousands and thousands of acres of it is about two and a half hours north of me. The stuff grows like telephone poles, straight, clear, great color. It's just the best in the world. It really is. All right, we're going to tighten up the blade. We'll fire up the mill. Let her warm up for a minute, and we'll see what this log looks like. So I'm going to take my time with this log. I'm going to be sawing some four-quarter lumber and maybe even a couple pieces of eight-quarter. I'll see what it looks like once we get the bark off and get it squared up. But I should get somewhere around, I'm just guessing, I didn't look at a scale, 160, 175 board feet. You know, at 150 board feet, at five bucks a board foot, you're looking at about $750 worth of lumber here once it's dry. But I think you could actually probably do better than that. But we'll see what we get when we're all done. And uh, hopefully I'm not getting all hyped up for nothing, but I don't think I am. I think it's going to be good.
looks really nice I'm gonna flip it 180 degrees and uh, once I get it squared up we'll put some water on it make that grain really pop in the color well I didn't have to uh, get any water to put on this because we had another rain delay that's been happening quite a bit lately but uh, this is absolutely beautiful really really nice stuff uh, what I'm gonna do now is uh, flip this log 180 degrees I'll clean up that side and then once I get it squared up we'll kind of figure out exactly what I'm gonna do with it well I better get busy looking to the west you can see how dark it's starting to get we may get another round of rain but mark my words before this winter we're gonna have a big pavilion down here nice tall ceilings in it room enough for the sawmill you know everything on a concrete slab room enough to stack some lumber and probably room to put some tractor attachments and the excavator that's what i want to have done before winter and uh, that's going to happen we get through this wedding and all this other stuff uh, we'll have some time and i'll get some help as well had this mill for about two years and probably only saw it about I don't know 15,000 board feet so I have a lot to learn but one thing I know for sure you always want to make sure you keep the pith centered okay you know these logs have taper to it that's why I just lifted that end down there when I first put the log on the mill I made sure this is centered from one end to the other for example you can look I'm at about seven and a quarter inches from here over now when you come over to this side here, seven and a quarter inches to the center. And now I lifted this end up and from the rails I measured up, it's 16 and 3 eighths and it's 16 and 3 eighths on the other side. It's perfect. Yeah, I'm just going to say it. This is the uh, nicest cherry log that I've had on the mill by far. 
Beautiful. 13 inch wide boards. So far I've got uh, five of them over there on the pile. Just, it's really nice. Beautiful stuff. Try to give you a better look at it there. Uh, before I forget, check this out. Steel KMA 135R. This is the uh, combi system. I've got several attachments for it. I have the blower on it right now. A uh, blower is very, very handy to have down here at the sawmill. But Steel sent this to us to try out. I've got several different attachments. If you would have told me five years ago that I would be using battery-powered equipment, I would have told you you were nuts. But uh, I'm sold on these things. I am. I've got the uh, AP300S battery in here. Someday, what I would like to do is a video. Like, we have a pretty big property, you know. Do all the string trimming. Uh, run the blower. And just see how long one of these batteries will last. I know this battery in a pole saw will outlast me by far. I'm telling you, it lasts a very long time in a pole saw. But I'm thinking with the blower and the string trimmer, maybe not so much, but we'll see. It is a scorcher today, and I know the guys down south will tell me, I don't know what hot is, but 87 degrees and very humid is pretty hot for us. But the good news is, after 30 years of marriage, I have somehow, some way, won the battle over the thermostat in the house. Our house literally feels like a meat locker right now, and I just love it. I do. But anyway, this video is going to run kind of long. So far, I've got about 50 board feet of this beautiful cherry lumber sawn. I'm going to finish this up in the next video, and we'll get a tally, get a better look at the boards, and we'll go from there. So like I always say, if you enjoy these videos, please hit the like button, click subscribe, and share them with your friends. Thanks.